If you're a pretty serious watch collector, you've probably amassed a certain number of watches over the years. And I wonder if you've ever looked at the collection and wondered to yourself, could I pare this down to just three watches? Well, I've done that in the past and actually it's a pretty tough job. There's some pretty great watches in my collection that I'd have a really hard time letting go of. But over the past few months, I noticed that I've been wearing the same three watches over and over again. I don't know if these are the three watches I would pick if I had to get rid of all the rest, but these days I've been wearing these ones a lot. And so I thought what I would do is have a little bit of fun with it and show you the three watches I've been wearing a lot, explain why I've been wearing them and why they're great watches. All three of these watches can be found for under a thousand dollars, the cheapest being closer to two hundred dollars. And I think there's a three watch collection in here somewhere. So with that, I give you the three watches that I've been wearing the most over the summer. Now, if you aren't familiar with my collection, go check out my Instagram page and you'll find all my watches there. In fact, I'm going to start posting every day a single watch from my collection in the month of August and into the month of September because there's more than 30 watches in the collection and you'll be able to see the whole thing. I went and took a single photograph of each watch and what we're going to do is we're going to throw it into the randomizer and let's see which three watches we get. All right, let's begin with the very first watch. Will it be a Hamilton? Will it be an Alpina? Will it be a Timex? Here we go. And here it is, the Christopher Ward C65. The Christopher Ward C65 is easily the most expensive watch on this list, and it's no longer in production, I don't think but you can definitely find a lot of these on the secondary market. And Christopher Ward has made a bunch of watches with a similar aesthetic, although perhaps just a little bit different. And it's that difference that makes me really, really like this watch. When I strap on this watch, it just hugs the wrist. It has this amazing profile to it that curves down from the flat sapphire crystal towards the case. And of course it has that light catcher case that Christopher Ward is so, well known for. I just love this watch. It's simple, it's understated. I really enjoy the steel bezel with the 24 hour markings on it. Everything clicks and rotates just the way you'd want it to. Everything is extremely legible. It is a GMT, which adds a nice added function to it. And of course it has the date there at the three o'clock. This is the old style Christopher Ward which has the Christopher Ward name on the dial at nine o'clock. And I know that's a bit controversial for some, but for me, I think it gives it a lot of character and I quite like it. It also has that old radium loom, which makes it look a little bit vintage during the day, but it also glows pretty brightly at night. The finishing on this watch is a standout. Christopher Ward offers incredible value for the money. It gives you near luxury finishing for mid-tier prices, in fact, low-end mid-tier prices. The bracelet is also fantastic. It's a three-link bracelet with what I think is a fantastic adjustable clasp. And that's one of the reasons why I've been wearing this watch quite a bit over the summer is because it is adjustable. And you might begin in the morning with your wrist at a certain size, but by the end of the day is definitely expanded in the heat. And yes, I am in Ontario, Canada, but a little known fact for the months of July and August, we get quite a bit of heat and a quite a bit of humidity here where I live. So I'm wearing this one a lot, I think because it's versatile, it's good looking, it's adjustable. And I've been wearing this in situations where I'm heading into the office and I just wanna throw something on my wrist and I have a few minutes to wind the watch and set the watch. I haven't been particularly setting the GMT so much and sometimes I don't even set the date, but it's accurate, very accurate. So if you take the time in the morning to set it to the atomic clock, it's only gonna be a couple seconds fast by the end of the day. So with this Swiss Salita 330 engine under the hood, it keeps great time. And it's also waterproof to 15 Atmos, which means if you did jump in the lake, you'd be just fine. All right, let's go back and spin that wheel one more time.
And let's see, what will it be this time? It will be this, the Timex Q Chronograph. The Timex Q Chronograph has been a huge hit for Timex in the past year. It's a really good looking watch that offers an incredible amount of value. It's not without its flaws, particularly a lot of people don't like how mushy that top pusher is when you engage the chronograph. And the finishing isn't on par with the Christopher Ward by any means. But for the amount of money that it cost, and I did get this at a discount, it's a really great value. I mean, just take a look at this. It's got a really well proportioned case. It comes on a very nice bracelet. I wish it was adjustable, it's not, but I'll forgive it. I do wear it just a little bit loose, and so that's okay, especially in the summer months. The chronograph is actually coming pretty handy in the kitchen for timing meal prep, and I've been using it to time my sermons on Sunday mornings, and that's really where I've been wearing this a lot. I like to be at church nice and early, and I get up, I go over my notes, I prepare myself for the day, have a coffee, spend breakfast with the kids, and then I'm rushing out the door. I always feel like I don't have enough time. So that's why I think I've been wearing this one a lot. I've been throwing it on the wrist at the last minute. It's steel, which means it's not gonna get sweaty. Like the Christopher Ward, this is great for summer months. And it's good looking. It works in almost any situation. You can wear it with shorts and a t-shirt. You can wear it with a suit, whatever works for you. So it's been a great grab and go, functional, good looking summer watch. And I've been wearing this a lot. All right, let's spin that wheel again and see what we get for number three. Well, you know, there had to be a Casio in there somewhere. This is the 40th edition square. And this is a watch that I had to have when I saw it. I paid way too much money for it. It is not worth the $399 Canadian that I paid in some respects, particularly the specs. It doesn't have solar. It doesn't have Bluetooth. It doesn't have multiband six. It's not really that fancy. There's not a whole lot going on here, but what is going on here is pretty cool. Number one, it's a 40th anniversary and I really dig these special edition anniversary watches. It did sell out at first and now there has been a restock here in Canada. So if you want one, you can still get one of these, but there's just something about it. I, I don't know what it is. I just, I keep picking it up. And I think that says a lot about a watch. I actually did buy another version of the square recently after I bought this one. It's essentially the same thing, but it has the Bluetooth and all of that stuff, but it just doesn't have the character of this one. It's not for everybody, but I really do enjoy the gold buckle and the gold keeper. I enjoy the gold buttons and the little star on the bottom left hand button. The gold colored LCD really stands out. Some people say it's not that legible, but in fact, when I look at it side by side to a few other Casio G-Shocks, I find that it's actually in most lighting situations, even more legible. And there's something about the weight to it as well. The way it sits on the wrist, the, the metal case adds a little bit of something to it, a little bit of presence and it. It doesn't make it heavy or bobbly, but it lets you know the watches on your wrist. And while it is a good thing that most G-Shocks sort of disappear on the wrist, something about this just makes it feel more premium. And at the end of the day, all I can say is I have been grabbing this watch probably more than any other, even more than the other two I've already mentioned. So there you go. There's my three watch collection. Again, I'm not selling the rest of my watches, but looking at these three watches, it sort of gives me an idea of at least right now during the summer of 2023, what my needs are. I've got a really nice Christopher Ward that meets almost any criteria for any situation. Great in the summer with the metal bracelet, expandable and all of that. I've got the Timex Chronograph, which is a great looking grab and go, throw it on on my way out to a meeting or out to church or out to get groceries. And it's right there with you. And it's also functional, of course, with that metal strap. And then I've got that really good looking G-Shock that 
Honestly, I wasn't even sure when I bought it if I'd wear it that much because being a $399 square, which you can get for $99, I was a little bit hesitant about wearing that. Maybe put it in a safe, keep it later, wear the other ones, get them banged up. But no, I really enjoy wearing it. So that's a pretty great collection. You have your GMT, your Chronograph, and your G-Shock. Go anywhere, do anything, watch. Now, why don't you tell me down below what three watches have you been wearing the most? Maybe you've got some great ideas in there. I'd especially love to hear it if it's under $1,000 because, you know, for me, that's really my comfort zone. But hey, if your three watch collection is a, a Patek, a Rolex, and a Tudor, let me know that as well. I'd love to hear that down in the comments below. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. Hope you're enjoying your summer, and I hope you have a great day.